Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a nice homemade exponential, somewhat exponential equation. We have x e to the power x plus x squared over 2 equals negative 1 over x plus 1. And we're going to be solving for x values. First of all, I want you to notice that we can multiply both sides by x plus 1 as long as x does not equal negative 1. So we're going to have that condition that x does not equal negative 1 and we can go ahead and multiply or cross multiply like this. I want to write the x plus 1 first and you'll see in a little bit why that's the case. But let me go ahead and multiply both sides by x plus 1. So we can get the number on one side and all the variables on the same side or on the other side. Okay, this kind of looks hard, doesn't it? But no worries, I'll make it easier for you. First of all, I want you to notice, looking at the exponent, we have x plus x squared over 2. This is something in disguise. Notice that we can make a common denominator and write it as 2x plus x squared all over 2. And then switching these around is going to give us something that should look more familiar. Now, I want you to compare, compare two things. This and this. What do you see? Take a good look. Do you see what I see? Hopefully. And if you do see what I see, you should say Lambert, right? T e to the t. Great. We're not there, but we'll get there. So when you're looking at something like this, always think t e to the t or Lambert. Great. Now, notice that x plus 1 squared is x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now when I said, do you see what I see? This is what I meant. Look at this and look at that. They're very much related, right? You see that? Good. Now, here's what we're going to do. Going back to our original equation, we have x plus 1 multiplied by e to the power. Now, I'm going to go ahead and change this because I already made a common denominator and switched around. So I'm going to go ahead and use this for my exponent. Make sense? Let's go ahead and do it. x squared plus 2x divided by 2. Now, I do know the relationship between x plus 1 and this one, right? You got a square x plus 1 to get closer to this. You don't get exactly that, but you get pretty close. So what, do you, what should we do? Well, first of all, this is equal to negative 1. The next thing we're going to do, let me make a little bit more room here. Oops. Equals negative 1. We're going to square both sides. And that should make a lot of sense because when you square this, you're going to get x plus 1 squared, which is this, which is pretty much connected to this. Make sense? But don't forget, we are supposed to square both sides. And when you square, x plus 1 will be squared, right? And this right here, this expression, will also be squared, but squaring basically means multiplying the exponent by 2. So the 2's are going to cancel out, giving us almost, almost what we want. Okay, great. We have a positive 1 on the right hand side. Be very careful because we squared a negative number. So we have to be careful about extraneous solutions. All right. All right, let's continue. We're one step away from getting x plus 1 squared, and that is adding 1 here. But how can you just magically add 1? You can't just add it, right? It just means multiplying by e to the power 1 or just multiplying by e. Does that make sense? Because when you add the exponents, it means multiplication, right? Think about expon exponential rules. Now, let's go ahead and write this again with the perfect square symbol. e to the power x plus 1 squared. And this should be your t e to the t, right? Does that make sense? Now, here's your t, in case you didn't see it, and that's your e to the t. Make sense? So, we can apply Lambert's W function on both sides, and we're going to get what? What happens when you apply Lambert's W function to a product like t e to the t? You get t, right? So in other words, w of t to the t is t. Okay? So then we have to apply it on the right-hand side as well. But what are we going to get from there? Let's find out. First of all, we get from here 
x plus 1 squared. And on the right hand side, we can kind of write this as 1 times e to the power 1. So isn't that like t e to the t again, but this time t is 1, so it's just 1. Make sense? Easy, right? You input t e to the t and you get t. That's what it is. Great. So now this equation has two solutions, doesn't it? One of them is x equals 0 because 0 plus 1 squared is 1. And then the other one is x equals negative 2 because negative 1 squared is also 1. The problem is x equals 0 does not work. Why doesn't it work and how do I know that? We'll go back to the original. You can go ahead and check, like replace x with 0. This is going to give you e to the power 0 on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, it's going to give you negative 1. And we know that e to the power 0 does not equal negative 1, right? But negative 2 will give you the answer. How do I know that? I checked it for you. But let's go ahead and do it one more time. It's going to give you an e to the power negative 2. Again, I'm checking x equals negative 2. Negative 2 plus 4 divided by 2. That's equal to, is it equal to negative 1 over negative 2 plus 1? This is negative 2, that's positive 2, e to the power 0 is 1, and this is negative 1 divided by negative 1, which is also 1, so 1 equals 1, yay, it checks out, therefore, x equals negative 2 is a valid solution, and it is the only valid solution, make sense? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of something, the graph of these two functions, right? The original ones. And as you can see clearly, hopefully, on this, that they intersect at x equals negative 2. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.